We're told they didn't even talk about the pincher affair at Cabinet today, but look at those faces. Hanging over all of them, another scandal calling into question the Prime Minister's judgment and truthfulness. Chris Pincher has had to resign as Deputy Chief Whip after allegations that he drunkenly groped two men at a private club last week. He denies that. But the bigger problem for Boris Johnson is the claim that he knew about alleged serial sexual misconduct by Mr Pincher, but chose to ignore it. Today in the Commons, an urgent question forced the government to admit the Prime Minister had been told about a complaint upheld against Chris Pincher when he'd been at the Foreign Office. Thank you very much. Last week, when fresh allegations arose, the Prime Minister did not immediately recall the conversation in late 2019 about this incident as soon as he was reminded as soon as he was reminded the number 10 press office uh, corrected their public lines Downing Street have had to keep changing their story. On Friday, they said the Prime Minister was not aware of any specific allegations against Mr Pincher when he made him Deputy Chief Whip. By Monday morning, they were saying he was aware of allegations that had been resolved or which did not progress to a formal complaint. Now today, they've had to admit he was personally briefed about the complaint about Mr Pincher at the Foreign Office. They've been partly forced into this because of the extraordinary intervention of this man, Lord MacDonald, who until 2020 was the top civil servant at the Foreign Office. In an open letter this morning to the Parliamentary Standards Commissioner, Lord MacDonald wrote, There was a formal complaint. Allegations were resolved only in the sense that the investigation was completed. Mr Pincher was not exonerated. To characterise the allegations as unsubstantiated is therefore wrong. I know that the senior official briefed the Prime Minister in person because that official told me so at the time. I think they need to come clean. I think that the language is ambiguous. Uh, it's sort of uh, the sort of telling the truth and crossing your fingers at the same time and hoping that people are not too forensic in their subsequent questioning. Back in the Commons, a Conservative had this question for government ministers. Ask themselves if they can any longer tolerate being part of a government which, for better or worse, is widely regarded as having lost its sense of direction. It is for them to consider their positions. And that is the central question, whether enough of his ministers and MPs still back him we good? or whether he has tested their loyalty to thank breaking you. Morning, point. Uh, thank you. Well, let's speak live to Andy, who's, uh, as you can see, on Downing Street for us. Andy, good to talk to you on the programme. One of Boris Johnson's own MPs today, Sir Roger Gale, has accused him of effectively getting his ministers to lie for him. The accusations seem to be getting stronger as the days continue. I mean, are you hearing more anger from some other Tory MPs today? Yeah, I think a lot of ministers are really getting pretty fed up about this. I spoke to one yesterday who wanted to talk about a specific policy, was utterly fed up that instead he had to answer questions about this latest problem for the Prime Minister. You saw ministers who were out over the weekend trying to defend a government line that was then contradicted soon afterwards. You've got allegations that the uh, communications office, the press office here at Number 10, is misleading journalists because they're not getting the full story. All of this is a very corrosive effect on the loyalty of MPs and ministers. And I do think it's causing real damage to the Prime Minister. I think it's giving more energy to the campaign within the Conservative Party to remove him as leader. I think he's in trouble again.